Hare Krishna, everyone. Uh, Hare it's Krishna. truly an honor, privilege, and pleasure to interview His Grace Chaitanya Charan Prabhu, the author of the world's only Gita daily feature. Each reflection is short, just about 300 words, takes a few minutes, and it's based on a verse and a theme. Over 3,000 reflections Prabhuji has written over the years. And for me, this is very personal. Chaitanya Charan Prabhu has been my role model, he's been a guide, and he's been an exemplar to me. So I'm truly honored and blessed to have this opportunity to interview Chaitanya Charan Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhuji, for taking the time. Um, I would just like to start off by talking a little bit about your childhood journey. So your childhood journey, you had to face so many tough challenges. You were born with a congenital heart disease. You were defectively vaccinated that left you with a permanent disability. You had a firecracker that burnt your face and you lost your mother. So after all these things and all that you have learned through the Gita, how has Gita helped you make sense of that part of your life? Hmm. See, quite often when we are going through life, it is just a series of experiences and that time we are simply trying to cope and move on. So for me, when you put it this way, it's a series of incidents that have happened over many years. Uh, when you put it this way, it seems to be terrible. But uh, overall, I felt that I had a supportive family and I had some religious inclination, spiritual inclination. But now when I look back at it, say in my engineering studies, I was introduced to the Bhagavad Gita and I started studying it seriously. So I see that all those experiences have made me who I am. And it is because of those experiences that I was able to be more receptive to the wisdom of the Gita. So for example, because of the heart disease as well as the physical disability of polio, I was not very physically active. And that's what made me intellectually more active. And I had energy, so I had to direct it somewhere. And especially later when my mother passed away because of blood cancer, that's when I started directing my intellectual uh, energy toward more metaphysical questions. Earlier, it was more scientific and more uh, self-help kind of reading I would do. So and then when I was introduced to the Bhagavad Gita, I felt that... Uh, Ultimately, Krishna has a plan for our life. And it, it takes time to realize that plan or to understand what that plan is. So essentially, I would not have been that receptive to the wisdom of the Gita and would not have been enriched by that wisdom if I had not gone through those experiences. And I, uh, we see Krishna says, Upadrashta Anumanta Cha. Bharta Bhokta Maheshwara. This is 1323 in the Bhagavad Gita where he says that it's very significant, the sequence he says. He says, I am the overseer. So which, which could lead to the idea of a passive God, almost a deistic conception that God is just observing everything. But then he also says Anumanta. That means he's allowing these things to happen. He's not just an overseer, but he has the capacity to control in a sense, this might lead to a little more negative understanding that, oh, if he has the capacity to intervene, why doesn't he intervene? Why does he permit sometimes bad things to happen? But Upadeshta Anumantacha Bharta. So he is our maintainer. Now, how does he maintain? So he maintains by allowing those things to happen to us that help us grow. And then that is that is the next part is Bhokta, Bharta, Bhokta, Maheshwara. Bhokta is, now when he talks about enjoying, the word enjoyment sometimes has a negative connotation, but actually there is a real life of enjoyment for all of us in our relationship with Krishna. So when we say Krishna maintains us, he maintains us in a way 
by which we can join him in through our devotional connection with him so i feel that uh, the universe does move purposefully although we may never understand that purposefully either immediately or even eventually but if we just keep moving on without letting uh, uh, situations affect us too much then i feel that things do work out well in the long run so one of the main lessons i feel when i look back at the bhagavad gita it is not that i knew that lesson but now when i look back at it is that our mind tends to catastrophize the problems that come in our life but the gita's wisdom can help us to contextualize them and that uh, is also one of my articles you know don't catastrophize problems contextualize them so i think that's something which is very uh, very important which i have learned from the gita and that's what i how i see those problems now thank you thank you prabhu so my next question is during this difficult time i look at it as a dark cloud in your life there was a silver lining and the silver lining was that you were performing very well academically like you were amongst the toppers in the state wide exam you achieved uh, 2350 out of 2400 in your gre exams and you also worked in a corporate company but somehow all of that left you a little dissatisfied so how would you connect that with the gita and how did the gita help you come out of that dissatisfaction yeah it's interesting now that we look back at life see for many of us our life is almost like a precharted journey in many ways okay you are educated now you have to become an engineer you have to become a doctor you have to do this you have to do that and we move along on that precharted journey and we achieve certain landmarks along that journey but then if you find out that at least this is what happened with me that those landmarks didn't turn out to be what i had hoped or expected them to be so especially for me the biggest revelation was when i did well in gre and i was celebrated and feted in my university in my but then i found that uh, that sub satisfaction was very insubstantial if uh, if someone forgot to appreciate me some forgot to congratulate me that just agitated me so much and then i started thinking that is there some way which we can find satisfaction which is not dependent on externals and that's when i started so the same intellectual ability that i had then i i still trying to use it but because that intellectual ability now i am using it to study the gita and connect with krishna so that dependence on external validation is not that much i won't say that i'm entirely free from it it's very difficult as a human being embodied we all have a ego but the extent of that dependence on external validation if it decreases it can be significantly liberating so when i read in the bhagavad gita about say, chapter 13 8 to 12 krishna talks about the the characteristics of knowledge and the first he talks about is humility so which is very interesting you could put it this way that humility is the doorway to knowledge in the sense that unless we are humble we can't learn we will think i already know but what do i need to learn from anyone else but you know, this experience gave me also another understanding that actually we we may learn even if we don't have humility because we may think i want to learn and I, i might temporarily take a humble position so that i can later parade my knowledge but without humility in some cases we won't be able to acquire knowledge but in other cases even if we acquire knowledge without humility we won't be able to relish that knowledge because without humility that knowledge will be a tool for getting something else a tool for prestige tool for position tool for power and then it won't be very fulfilling so i feel that when we study the bhagavad gita yes of course we can say the gita's knowledge is a tool for connecting with krishna but then krishna is always with us so in that sense he's not never going to go away from us so i find i found that 
the purpose of study and the purpose of knowledge uh, was something which uh, the gita illuminated for me and so that dissatisfaction again was a was a spur for in inquiring what is the purpose of the intelligence so we could say one way is that life and the experiences that i went through in life they they brought into clear light the problem and then when the gita offered a solution i found it relevant you know for example if we tell somebody how to do something okay how to fix your refrigerator if i give you a book well if your if your fridge is working that how to doesn't make any sense i don't need it so and how to has to be fixed to a why so the gita can give us answers but unless we come to unless life brings us to a situation where the why becomes apparent now why should i look for inner happiness because out of happiness is unfulfilling why should i use my intelligence to study the gita and not study 100 other subjects so i felt that for all of us now in my outreach also so uh, when i try to write on the gita i try to begin with a situation that brings out the why you know that some real life situation where we need an answer and then see an answer that is provided when it is not needed it's like giving food to somebody who is not hungry they okay you give me food but uh, so we have to create the need for the answer so for me life created that need and then since then i have been observing uh, life around me and seeing how our human needs or our needs during our human journey are addressed through the gita and that's what thank i try to Prabhu. share in my gita daily articles thank you so much so before i dive deep into the gita daily articles i just want to focus on one specific question uh, after life gave you these answers after you started uh, the journey of bhakti let's zoom into one specific year of your life 2011 where you slipped and fell in the temple in the juhu temple and you had a cervical uh, hip bone fracture and how did gita how did all this knowledge after practicing for so many years how did the gita knowledge help you at that point can you go through those moments of agonizing pain and how gita helped you specifically at those moments yes in often when i speak in yoga studios and other places people ask have you had any spiritual experiences so when they ask spiritual experiences their idea is maybe have some mystical vision or something like that now we all may have had such experiences but there is uh, no need to ground our spirituality on some paranormal experiences which are which some people may have had or not had for me that time when you mentioned was one of my strongest spiritual experiences because when you talk about spiritual experience what do we really mean by that it could mean that we see some other reality beyond this some saints may see krishna some other spiritualists may see some light or whatever else but i feel that spirituality is most real for us at our level when it helps us to face what is real for us the spirituality becomes real for us not by showing us some other reality yes that's fine but it becomes most real and relevant for us when it helps us to face real issues in our life so at that time when i slipped and fell it was uh, it was a moment where i could have had every justification for turning away from god in fact one of my friends uh, wrote to me you know how can you still believe in god and i wrote an article about that that's on my website he said i was in a temple i was i had dedicated my life to serving krishna i was chanting krishna's names and at that time in a completely spiritual setting and i slipped and fell and at one level it was quite trivial somebody had just spilled some water and i didn't notice it and the fall was minor but the damage was major because of i had some osteoporosis because of the polio so the pain was at that time unbearable and somehow at that time i started reciting the gita's verses 
I and as soon as I started doing that, I found, hey, this is so uplifting. This is so enriching. So it was almost as if uh, I experienced some kind of uh, buffer around me or buffer between me, uh, me as a conscious experiencer and my body. So the body was radiating out pain, but the verses of the Gita and my absorbing my consciousness in the verses of Gita acted as a buffer by which I no longer experienced that pain. So that was a very powerful experience for me. And since then, I have tried to tap the power of words. So our, our, I feel we often talk about sound, but often when we talk about sound, a spiritual sound, we reduce it to the holy name of Krishna. Now the, Krishna the, the mantra, Hare Krishna Mahamantra is very important. At the same time, the potency of spiritual sound can manifest to each one of us in different ways. So for me, it very powerfully manifested through reciting of the verses of the Gita. And I, I use the word Krishna words, you know, words that connect our consciousness with Krishna. So the Gita is a source of Krishna words for me. Now, many of the Gita daily articles that I write, I try to have either concise titles or one sentence summaries. So which are, so those are also, I feel pregnant with spiritual wisdom and then they can absorb our consciousness. So it's a, it's a, for me, such words are, are intellectual, spiritual absorption. So it's spiritual because their words connected with Krishna. It's intellectual because the words have meaning. So I feel that each of us, so for me, Krishna words are a very powerful tool. And when I write the Gita Daily articles, one reason also is that I want to absorb my consciousness in those words. So I want to buffer myself from the mind's agitations, from the world's agitations. And fortunately for me, I'm also able to create some resources which help buffer others from, their, from the agitations that they face because of their mind and the world that they are in. Thank you, Prabhu. So that's a perfect segue into the next question that I had. So the next question is something very personal. Uh, for me, I start my day every day as soon as I wake up. Rather than reading the news or anything else, I open the Gita daily and read the article for the day. And somehow it's been a part of my practice, my daily practice, and that has helped me throughout. Um, the day by keeping me spiritually nourished. So what inspired you to start the Gita daily? Okay, I will change our roles now. And I would like to ask you a little bit more about, uh, so when you say it makes you spiritually nourished, what, what, what about it nourishes you? Is it, uh, maybe you could, is it the relevance or is it the fact that it's connected with the Gita? Or what, what is it? Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, so basically what happens is, I don't read it very quickly. I take some time, I take about 15, 20 minutes, I pause, I think about it, I somehow try to digest those points. And throughout the day, I try to see if I can apply the points that you mentioned uh, in my day-to-day -day activities. So that is what nourishes me. And then in the night, what I do is, I have a journal by which I just write down all the things I learned and how I started my day by reading your article. and it's it's very blissful i mean every day goes on like this so that is um, how it's been beneficial to me that's amazing so basically then it becomes like a you could say like a, a anchor for your consciousness throughout the day if yes, you have something exactly. you have read something and then you can bring the consciousness back you know that's yes. one of my purposes also in writing it so thank you for sharing that so we all need a life and the mind both present such storms that we need some, some tools to anchor ourselves. So when you write a journal, the journal is about your life, that, that day's experiences, or is it... In connection with the Gita, in connection with what you mentioned um, oh, really? in the uh, okay. Gita Daily article. Yes, yes. That's some, and you have been doing this for how long? I've been doing it for about three and a half, four years. I mean, the practice that I've been of writing, I did it for about two years now. 
but uh, reading Gita daily articles, it's been about yeah three and a half four years. Oh, okay, amazing. So 15, 20 minutes is a significant amount of time and you really go deep into it then to yes. be able to connect. Yes. Uh, maybe I should try this with some of the old Gita Daily articles because what has happened <laughs> is that uh, many of these articles or at least some of these articles can be elaborated into more reflections and bigger articles, bigger themes. But sometimes when I keep writing a lot, those I just keep focusing on new themes and I don't go back to the older ones. So I'll think about this. this is a, thank you. This is a good, good way of using the Gita actually, using the Gita daily and connecting with the Gita and connecting with our daily lives. Thank you for sharing. Uh -huh. And one more thing that I want to share um, about how it has evolved. I don't think that your articles are like articles currently are very similar to your articles maybe three or four years ago. I feel that there has been some evolution um, uh, over the years. So did this evolution happen because of feedback or because of some other factors? Um, any thoughts? Okay, that's a good frame for thinking about it. Well, first thing is that I started writing because I, I just wanted to write something on the Gita and I felt that uh, I, I used to read some Christian writers who write every day on the Bible. I also checked, uh, saw there are people who write on the Buddha Dharma, there are some who write on the Quran, many actually write on the, Christian, on the Bible and the Quran, but I didn't see anyone who was writing on the Gita every day. And uh, of course there were groups which were sending Gita verses every day. What happens is that the Gita verse, I see it like a sutra or a formula. Now, unless somebody knows the math or unless somebody has a situation where they need the formula, they say, okay, what do I do with this formula? It's nice, I have this formula. So the formula and the, and the problem that the formula can solve. The two are there. So we have the formula and we have, the, we have issues which we need to address. But often for ourselves to find the link between our life issues, which is like the problem to be solved, the math problem or whatever, and the formula, that is the Gita verse. So that link, it's not easy to establish just by reading the verse. So I felt that writing something on the Gita on a regular basis was important. And the Gita tradition is a living tradition. It is, you know, every generation has to represent the Gita so that it's relevant to that it, it generation, it, it generation. And so Srila Prabhupada also had said that every day write something, what you realized. That is a, so he encouraged us to do that. So I felt that instead of just writing randomly on different subjects, I could write on the Gita. Because I personally felt very connected with the Gita. So it was soon after that experience that I mentioned 2011, after that I was, uh, I was uh, immobilized for some time. And that was the time when I started uh, this Gita daily. So initially it was simply an article which I would write. And uh, I see as, as it has been going through four different stages uh, in terms of the feature. And I can talk about the content also in terms of features. First I started with simply the article. Then I started adding audio videos because I was also doing videos with is called desire tree for the Bhakti Shastri course and other courses. So I decided to add those videos also over there. And that also helped me to think more, plan more, because especially if I had to do videos, I had to do a lot of videos in advance and then come back and do the audios there, uh, do, the, uh, do the actual writing of articles. So addition of audio video was the second stage. Then the third stage was when I started adding the think it over. So where I started making it more reflective for one's daily life. And I found that also helpful for me because uh, it helps me to look back and introspect and see how, how it means, what it means for me. And the whole idea of a daily meditation is to have something to reflect. So of course the whole article could be useful for reflecting, but having specific points for reflecting 
helps further so that was broadly the third stage where now as i was writing i i have addressed various issues with respect to the gita most of them relate with personal application but they also talk about social analysis and then the going into the into the semantics of the gita verse the technicality of the gita verses but most of them i keep it primarily on not so much on the philosophy of the gita as on the uh, application of the gita keeping the philosophy in the in the certainly as a launching pad or as a foundation but it's more applied apply application gita it's more gita applied so the think it over helped and then i think what i did recently was i started having the one sentence summary so earlier i used to have that as the title of the article but then sometimes that would make the title very big and so now i have more of a question as a title and i have a one sentence summary so i would say that's how features have been added and if i look back at my writings in 2011 or 2012 when i started the gita and, and look, look at them now i have tried to hopefully i have improved as a writer so i have tried to present similar concepts but maybe make them clearer try to use simpler language without being simplistic and try to have the whole format become more accessible because as i keep writing in that format then naturally it becomes more accessible for me to write further so i feel writing the short 300 word articles is reasonably easy for me by krishna's grace now that's a brief overview of the evolution thank you prabhu um so just based on your answer you mentioned the link the link between the gita and some a huge wide range of issues um such as uh, social issues uh, political ideologies scientific trends to personal issues so how do you actually connect the gita to all of these different range of issues uh, is this something that you think of first is it uh, the issue that you think of and then think of the verse or is it the verse that you think of first and then connect it to the issue how do you create the link okay uh it's organic so it's not that i sit down and plan but i i love to recite the gita so i try to recite at least some verses of the gita every day sometimes a, at least some a chapter a daily sometimes and i don't like to necessarily recite a full chapter i like to recite individual verses many times sometimes this reciting a chapter becomes a goal and you finish it and if say chapter 18 has 78 verses so if i recite 78 verses i may not necessarily contemplate much on any verse so i might just take one verse and recite it five times 10 times and it could be loud in the mind so so i find that the gita verses are there in my mind because of that and then uh, when i connect some, when i read some contemporary issue so the it is said in the writing that if you steal from one person it's plagiarism if you steal from 100 people that's creativity <laughs> so whenever i am reading either reading some spiritual text reading anything contemporary so i i am always on the lookout for striking thoughts and especially striking wording of thoughts and then uh, so then as soon as i get something like that so this could be based on my reading whether it could be as you said scientific trends or socio political issues or it could be personal analysis personal psychological analysis or relational analysis so whatever i am reading and experiencing in life as i articulate it uh, i then during the articulation phase so first there is the co- collection then as i am articulating it then i connect it with the gita verse so it's i don't start each reflection with a gita i start a reflection with a thought a thought or a phrase thought more of like articulated thought you could say and then from that articulated thought i connected with the gita verses so that's broadly how the process works so you know already you could say that i have uh, articulated thoughts for almost uh 10 more years so 
<laughs> so and i have also written rough drafts for almost a year or so so i will that way i hope to keep having this going on as much as possible consistently thank you prabhu so one thing that i have seen over the years is that most of your geeta daily articles focus on the mind especially chapter 6 any particular reason about this yes it's a good observation it's a uh, i find that the mind is where philosophy and practical life intersect very powerfully <clears throat> that means that the gita's message how is it relevant for us I uh, there are various aspects to it we can talk about how working with detachment can give us equanimity how we can talk about you know working in a mood of devotion can give us meaning and fulfillment in our lives how analyzing in terms of the three modes can help us get a sense of perspective and balance in our lives and so there are various aspects from which we could uh, uh, or we can talk about how the gita's list of self destructive desires can help us to become free from self destructive behavior so there are various ways in which you can analyze the gita's relevance what i find most relevant my eyes that the mind that the mind is something which troubles every one of us so not everyone may want to learn to live a meaningful life not everyone might be interested in like a socio political analysis of situations some people are happy being uh, imbalanced i'll do this and i'll do this fully and then i'll shift to something else so there are various needs which are more specific but managing the mind is a need that is universal and uh, often we present the gita as gita's teaching as you are not the body and saying you are not the body is actually quite uh, abstract and philosophical for most people and it seems to also lead to like a body denying or body rejecting spirituality which is which is not so appealing but on the other hand if we present that not that you are not the body but you are not the mind oh i am not the mind what do you mean by that because everybody is disturbed by their mind mental health problems are huge and they are also alarmingly rising so if we can understand how we are not the mind and how we can deal with the mind then that's a very powerful resource for us to move forward in our lives so i find that personally the gita teachings about the mind have benefited me a lot and also i find that that's a subject where the gita message and its relevance can be presented to others also that's why many of my articles are on the mind hmm thank you prabhu so there's one thing that you mentioned in your previous answer that uh, caught my attention and that was when you said that most people focus on a particular problem invest in it and then they move on but in your case you have completely done this over and over and over again without a break 7 days a week for several years what gives you that fulfillment or what drives you to do this every single day for so many years yeah of course i've been trying to do it i've not been consistent in terms of getting the article published every morning which i would like to sometimes it goes in the afternoon or sometimes goes in the evening but i do try to make sure that article is published every day uh, i see this as my offering to krishna Now, each of us we do various services but a personal relationship means that we would also like to make a personal offering to krishna so i see this as my personal offering to krishna and that's why i try to make sure that it gets done and it said in the bhagavad gita that swakarmana tam abhyarcha by your work worship him so uh, my one of my major contribution major services is writing so through writing i also see that i'm worshiping krishna uh, so this is krishna says adhishyate cha yaimam dharmam samvad mavayo gyana yagyena tenaham ishtasyam iti bemati that 
they sh that those who study the sacred conversation of ours are worshipping me with their intelligence so it is a form of bhakti for me and just as we do our sadhana or puja or japa regularly so similarly i see this not so much as a uh, as a service that i am doing for for teaching something to others i see this as something which is my offering to krishna and i am using whatever gifts he has given so somehow i have many other books planned to write many other subjects to write on but sometimes i am able to do that sometimes not able to do that but this is one area which by krishna's mercy i have been able to be consistent so it's something which is fit into my mind that i have to do this every day and it's not that uh, every article is something which i'm satisfied with i read in our book on writing that even the books that are considered classics now often those classics were simply the last drafts of manuscripts which the printer which the publisher literally pulled from the hands of the author who wanted to do more editing <laughs> so in that sense i i would love to refine the articles more so i would say that if in a week i write seven articles maybe one article is something which i really find or oh, this is something which it's a worthy offering to krishna this is something which is uh, which is good the remaining articles some of them are good some of them are articles which i wish i had never written also but uh, overall i see that just as the quality of the offering is important the regularity of the offering is also important so i try to even if i can't always get the quality i try to at least maintain the regularity thank you prabhu i mean i was just thinking when you were saying daily offering for me my daily offering to krishna is to read your articles so it's amazing for you writing it writing an article is your daily offering for me reading it is a daily offering so it's so nice that we are doing this as an offering to krishna uh, but while doing this has this one particular offering led to other projects or led to other offerings yes um i have uh, several plans which i hope will materialize soon one is that gita daily is more like a regular reading of the gita i want to take some of the gita daily articles and make them like a maybe like a 51 day or a 21 day introductory course on the gita so that when somebody a new person so whenever somebody subscribes for gita daily they can choose either to get the daily articles because reading every day requires a certain level of commitment and if somebody doesn't have that level of commitment at least they can get their overview of the basic themes of the gita so i am working on that but now i have some 3000 articles so select a short list of 21 or 51 articles and to convey the gita's core message through 300 word reflections is not that easy but that is something which i am working on uh, simultaneously most of my talks which i give uh, wherever i am which are part of the world they are they all draw from gita daily articles i think my speaking and my writing are symbiotic i draw a lot on my writing and my speaking uh, and then while speaking i get further ideas so i would say many of the topics that i have spoken on i have resulted from the gita daily articles and uh, i also wrote uh, one of my books is gita wisdom through quotes so that is that is what you could call like a sleeper hit i never expected it to do it well at all but that is one of the one of the best best received books so because i was writing this gita daily there was a publisher who saw that and he asked me so this is uh, in india crossword is a prominent bookstore so they they started a writing initiative writing um publishing initiative they were mainly book selling books but they started a publishing initiative called right place and they were making a series of 365 quotes based on many established sources so 365 quotes from gandhi 365 quotes from martin luther king 365 quotes from the bible so they wanted 365 quotes from the bhagavad gita so initially they asked me for 365 verses and i said the gita has 700 verses and i, I could just select half of, uh, half of those verses and give you 
but that won't be so um, so relevant or inspiring the gita is a profoundly insightful book at the same time the gita has its own world view so once we understand the world view then the gita's verses become very insightful and inspiring but if we just take one verse out from the gita then it is not so easy to find it like a very inspiring or insightful thing the gita is not like a self help book it offers self help insights it is not a it is not a inspirational code book it offers inspiration it has many thoughts and verses that will inspire but the gita's format is serious philosophical analysis so without entering that world view just to take out quotes from the gita which will be very peaceful which will be, which will inspire which will provide us solace or motivation or inspiration that doesn't happen so easily so i suggested that i could instead of providing gita quotes i'll provide you quotes inspired by the gita so that's how my book came out gita wisdom through quotes and <clears throat> that um, Well, was very well received widely so i think that gita those quotes came from the gita daily articles then we also made a card deck uh, of 365 quotes i have already made a second book now on gita wisdom through quotes which will also come out soon so that way we are uh, so i think that was one project that came out then i have i'm also working on things on the mind which are not yet been published but i have a lot on the mind so hopefully that will come out soon so like that i now currently i'm doing this gita course gita key verses online course so that was also one way of providing a pathway for those who read the gita to move onward to the gita key verses course so basically the idea is i want to have a comprehensive portfolio for study on the gita so gita daily is more like a inspirational study of the gita then i have i would say broadly three other resources one is the bhakti shastri which is a very deep study not a very deep but significantly serious and deep study for those who are already living the gita then i have a gita verse by verse study which is on the spiritual scientist so all 700 verses there are about 10 minute a 10 minute talks on each of the verses so that is something which is more for a textual or a verse by verse study of the gita the gita the bhakti shastri is more of section wise study of the gita with this section and this this theme from this section and what i am doing currently the gita key verses that is more of a gita concepts applied so gita daily is more like gita verses applied gita verses how to apply them but i have taken the contemporary scenario and seen what are the common spiritual questions that people have in the contemporary scenario and see how the gita addresses those questions so that's what i have done in that book on in that um, course so hopefully that will also come out in future as a book krishna willing so that's how some projects are evolving from there so yeah. thank you prabhu so we talked about evolution of the gita daily and how nice offerings are coming out of that particular project but i want to specifically focus on your spiritual growth so during this evolution of gita daily have you seen yourself grow spiritually also through this service through this offering i would hope so <laughs> otherwise uh, there would probably be something wrong with what i am doing so but at the very least i don't know about whether i have grown spiritually but at least while i am writing the gita our daily articles i am connected spiritually i can definitely say that so that is like a every day i would say that i am more focused on a connection with krishna or more connected with krishna during writing than even during other activities like uh, my sadhana or even when i am hearing classes reading books i don't connect as much as when i am i am writing so at least that much connection is there also the gita daily articles when i look at them i see that 
while the articles i wrote in 2011 what i have written now are similar but i do see that it is i who am being reflected over there so maybe now my i can see my language has become more sensitive i become more nuanced and i have started seeing spirituality just by writing the gita more in shades of gray rather than simply black and white so i think gita daily has helped me because it has become it has served as an anchor for me in my connection with krishna like what you said as an anchor for you in your day so this is my one steady connection with krishna and it has helped me to become more observant more perceptive more contemplative and i don't know whether i am krishna conscious much but i am definitely gita daily conscious that means whatever i am hearing whatever i am reading whatever i am thinking if some ideas for writing gita daily come up i i just grab them immediately so in that sense i could say that it has helped in increasing my connection with krishna sure thank you prabhu so that is about your uh, fulfillment your the benefit that you get from from gita daily from writing these articles now let's take the other side what do you expect the readers to benefit or how will they benefit by reading your articles for me personally as i said it's like an anchor um i have to start my day it's become part of my sadhana i have to start my day with your gita daily articles it keeps me going throughout the day but there are there any other benefits that you have heard from others uh through feedback or anything else that has benefited them in their lives yes many different ways uh, many many of the readers have written to me of course there many comments comes for specific articles uh, on the website but gita daily also goes on various other forums generally when people read something on whatsapp we have whatsapp groups we have facebook a yeah, google group so there we don't get responses much directly uh, because people have to write an email or something like that but on, so sometimes i get feedback on uh, com- comments appreciating comments on some articles uh, on the site but apart from that when i travel and i meet people a lot of them express that this helps them stay stay grounded so what you said something very similar but maybe in different ways i think that everybody will access the gita daily based on uh, their own needs their own situations to to benefit i would suggest three things one is if 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 it can be read daily then the advantage is that it has you have some connection with krishna connection with the gita so the daily reading itself will be like a spiritual grounding spiritual anchor can be said but another way is if some articles speak to us then noting them down or keeping a bookmark or keeping them with us that is something which even i find helpful for myself because although at one level i have written it but then i have written over 3000 articles i don't remember all of them or at least i don't remember all the points that i have written within all of them so quite often for us Uh, we see we need inspiration and we get inspiration but the challenge is to get inspiration when we need it <laughs> so so often we get inspiration we hear something we read something but maybe some later time we are going through some challenges and that's the time when we need inspiration so to get inspiration when we need inspiration is a challenge mm. and sometimes that can happen by krishna's mercy or by some somebody forward something to us and we get it but to some extent it is helpful for us it, it, it we are equipping ourselves if we if something is given as inspiration keep it accessible maybe no make a note of it maybe make some kind of index cards or keep some kind of indexing in uh, in some notepad or some not not noting software or something like that and say when we we feel distraction or we feel irritation or we feel de- depression or whatever whatever we are going through or when we experience judgmental attitude among someone we feel judged and rejected or something like that so if we keep those resources ready then i feel 
the Gita Daily can benefit quite a bit. I am also trying to work on creating a better tag, tagging and indexing on the website, but that requires a lot of effort. And as I'm moving forward, it's new articles are coming. So that becomes a little difficult for me to do, but hopefully that will also work out. But then you can, instead of keeping a record yourself, you can just go on the Gita Daily articles and see Gita Daily site also and see. But I think that is something which can be very helpful. So the third would be that if somebody is studying the Gita systematically, then the Gita Daily articles can also act as resources for seeing how Gita verses can be analyzed from different perspectives. So if we have read the Gita once or twice or a few times initially, then there is no, there's not much benefit in trying to simply speed through the Gita. Then, you know, it may be good even if you spend one hour on one verse, just read one verse, read a purport, and then uh, so on some articles, so on some important verses from the Gita, there might be 10 Gita Daily articles, 15 Gita Daily articles. Some of them may have five, three, one. But if we can see that, we read the Gita, and then we look at various ways in which the Gita Daily articles have been analyzed, then I would say that we will develop a deeper relationship with those verses. So I see that not only is the Gita non-different from Krishna, but each verse of the Gita is like a potential friend. And some verses, they become closer friends. Some verses are more of, you could say, uh, official friends. So for me, there are several verses which have inspired me a lot. 1858, um, 1858, if you pass over, if you become conscious of me, you will pass over all obstacles by my grace. Or 1153 is that right? just become an instrument in my hand. Arise and attain victory. Your enemies are destroyed by my arrangement. You just become an instrument in the fight. So verses like these, and many I could quote many other verses, but I feel that by reading a verse and a commentary and seeing it analyzed from different uh, perspectives, not only can we deep, uh, more un understand the verse better, uh, see its relevance more, but we can actually develop a relationship with the verse. So I can say that, you know, there is that famous pastime of uh, Ramanucharya when he asked Kanchi Purna that if we don't remember Krishna at the time of death, uh, then what will happen? It's just Krishna will remember and Krishna will come in our mind. So, and will help us remember. So what I, I don't, I, I don't say that I have much of a relationship with Krishna, but I do have a relationship with Krishna's words. And I have seen in my life also that at times when I need it, certain Gita verses pop up in the mind. So I feel, so that way, just reading the Gita regularly to have a, reading Gita daily regularly to have it as an anchor, uh, keeping Gita daily articles which have touched us, which have to equip us so that we can have the, we can get inspiration when we need inspiration and using the Gita daily articles for developing personal relationship with Gita verses during a Gita study. I think these are some ways in which the Gita daily can be used. Wow. Thank you so much, Prabhu. I really like how we can take some of these Gita daily articles that are relevant to us and string them like a pearl and put it around like a garland. I think that really is a wonderful yeah. way to look at it. Um, so thank you. Thank you for all these Gita daily articles. I just have one last question. Um, so you have written some books on uh, Bollywood movies, like really popular Bollywood movies like PK, GK for PK and OMG and so on. But you haven't written anything about cricket, which uh, you were a big uh, follower of cricket when you were young. <laughs> so <laughs> is there any reason why you have not talked about cricket and the Gita? There's even a movie called The Legend of the Bagger Vans where they connect yes. golf and uh, the Gita. So something like cricket and the Gita would be great for Indians. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yeah, thank you. It's, uh, I've been thinking about it. In fact, I have spoken on the topic of life lessons from the Gita, life lessons from cricket or something like that. I've spoken on a few occasions. 
uh, I, I definitely want to write on that genre. I'm just thinking of, uh, of how to write. So I have three, four broad ideas in mind. So you could say I have the content ready, but the format of presentation, I'm not yet sure. So one could be simply essays, a series of articles. It will be more like a nonfiction book where a series of articles involving uh, themes from the Gita parallel with themes from the themes from cricket. Mm. So another was, I was thinking of writing a fiction of a potential cricketer who gets depressed and then how Gita helps him. That would be quite interesting. But then writing fiction is a different genre itself and it's not that easy. So that is something which uh, will require a lot of effort. The, the format toward which I am gravitating right now is to use fiction, but say have a cricket coach who is also familiar with the Gita and then have uh, aspiring cricketers who go through various challenges. Sometimes they, are, they fail in performing. Sometimes they're not selected. Sometimes there is bias in there. There is a, there is bias because of which uh, they're not given opportunities or whatever. So how this uh, cricket coach draws from wisdom from the Gita to help aspiring cricketers face ch challenges in okay, that's the genre towards which I am going and I have some ideas. So hopefully something will come out in the near future. Thank you for that reminder, relevant reminder. That's, uh, that's all we have time for Prabhu. But thank you so much for taking this time and giving us such valuable gems of uh, the deeper understanding of what inspires you to write a Gita daily article daily. So thank you so much. Thank you again. Hare Krishna. Thank you for uh, taking the initiative for having this discussion. Thank you. <laughs>